The following is a crisis management analysis on the Deepwater Horizon oil spill by the Environmental Protection Agency. On April 20, 2010, a massive explosion erupted on the Deepwater Horizon, a drilling rig off the coast of Louisiana. The explosion eventually sunk the rig and killed 11 people. Millions of barrels of oil contaminated the Gulf region, wreaking havoc on the environment and the economy. During the crisis, oil billed out from the well on a daily basis. Almost every system in place to limit the impact of such a crisis, from prior rig inspections to capping the now open well, failed tremendously. BP, the company leasing the rig, had ignored its own ethical and safety standards and the U.S. government was irresponsibly caught off guard when senior officials refused to believe such a threat could ever occur. As the Environmental Protection Agency, we have noticed a failure to protect our environment at the expense of pursuing a profit, and that the proper mechanisms to prevent such a disaster have failed. The Deepwater Horizon crisis was a result of several factors leading to a buildup and ultimate release of chaos and an inability to respond swiftly and adequately. First, BP did not need to fill out a plan in the case of a blowout due to loosening regulations in 2008. Also, a House Energy and Commerce Committee found that BP had saved money and time at the expense of using riskier procedures. In fact, it was discovered that to keep drilling, employees had entered fake data into the system, meaning the perception of safety on board was not equal to the reality of the ship's safety. Following the blowout and initial damage, the Coast Guard began to intervene. Admiral Thad Allen was appointed head of National Incident Command. However, due to improper planning and preparation, there was, no, there was initial confusion because there had never been a National Incident Command, and so no one knew how it should function. And although just weeks before the accident, the Coast Guard had held a training exercise in case of an oil spill of national significance, such as the Deepwater Horizon, not a single cabinet secretary was in attendance, though all were invited. Additionally, without clear leadership, communication was also disorganized and dysfunctional. And with the multitude of agencies and governments involved, communication was a key factor that needed to be working. But instead, the NIC had to spend precious time building a response organization during the emergency it was meant to end. Another example of the lack of preparation was BP's inability to solve the issue swiftly. Only after five attempts to cap the leak, 200 million gallons of oil, and 87 continuous days of leaking was the spill finally capped. Many things went wrong in this tragic event and unfortunately many of the failures could have been solved with proper coordination or planning beforehand. As the EPA, our next step is to assist in cleaning up this environmental crisis. Many options have been tested. We have looked at containment and placed a cap in the oil line. Next, we will examine many types of dispersant. Corexit oil dispersant is our best option currently, as it is immediately available. However, we believe better options exist and will hopefully be found over time. Along with this, we are engaging in raw physical oil removal. We are collecting what we can for later processing, filtering offshore, and controlled oil burns on certain patches. Cleaning up this oil spill is of major concern not just on the environmental front, but on an international one as well. Due to the location of the spill, there is a danger of becoming an international crisis. If it is not cleaned up quickly and efficiently, the spill could lead, spread to Cuban or Mexican waters, creating more of an issue. A secondary consideration is the US-UK relations. BP headquarters are located in the United Kingdom, and a crisis management comments from BP did not benefit relations. BP downplayed the crisis and effects while presenting misguided facts. Intergovernmental relations need to be improved to coordinate relief efforts. Meanwhile, we are working to remove as much oil as we can from the ocean as, the, as an environmental agency. Quick decision-making responses to control the oil patch spread are key right now. The damage that the Deepwater Horizon oil spill has already caused to the environment and the looming uncertainty of what the future may hold makes for a crisis that not only can, but will turn into a media disaster if the proper information is not portrayed to the public. As with all crisis situations, a sense of urgency must be conveyed in order to maintain national faith that the proper steps are being taken in order to assess and immediately remedy the spill. Unfortunately, statements made by BP have not improved the confidence of the public at this time. In the following clip from an interview, BP CEO Tony Hayward begins by denying his company's responsibility for the spill, and then goes on to further convey a concerning sense of casualness by utilizing phrases that portray his phlegmatic attitude towards the cleanup efforts. The, uh, this is not our accident, but it's our responsibility to deal with it, to arrest the leak, to deal with the oil on the surface, uh, to ensure that there is no or minimal environmental damage, and where there are legitimate claims for business interruption, we will make them good. 
As the Environmental Protection Agency, we strongly urge that all media outlets are provided with accurate information so that it may be properly presented to the public. As the government has made the decision to make the cleanup a private effort and not allow for on-site coverage, it is critical that they hold regular press conferences in order to maintain transparency to the public. In addition, the EPA will work to provide continuous updates on their efforts and the current situation in order to counteract inaccurate information provided by all other media sources and BP in of itself. After multiple failed attempts, the well was declared sealed on September 19th, five months since the initial breach. However, the site has continued to periodically leak small amounts of oil and the restoration efforts and environmental, health, and economic consequences have continued years later. Huge losses in tourism and commercial interests left the area further devastated economically. Many investigations and lawsuits were settled, which much of the settlement funds going towards restoration efforts. They have been the images which have filled our screens for over three months, and the face of this disaster has been BP's chief executive, Tony Hayward. Apart from the environmental catastrophe, it's been a PR disaster as well for BP and its boss. Public approval was low towards the response effort, as well as President Obama and BP. BP's stock plummeted, and the CEO of BP resigned as a result of the crisis. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. You know, I'd like my life back. I wasn't part of that decision-making process. Again, I was not involved in decision-making. It's impossible for me to answer that question. You're not taking responsibility. You're, you're, you're kicking the can down the road and acting as if you have nothing to do with this company. This entire crisis has been a tragedy as well as a learning process. The lack of safety and unpreparedness from the government, companies involved, or even the U.S. Coast Guard for a response to a spill of national significance was obvious and concerning. There not only needs to be an institutional structured plan in place prior to the disaster, including a previously appointed person or group of competent leaders to respond to an emergency such as this. Because we are running out of places to drill on land and in shallow water, companies are drilling a mile beneath the ocean surface. This creates a much greater risk that should be prepared for in a case of an emergency. Approaching this crisis can be clearly defined by Cotter's eight-step model. Create and recognize the urgency of the spill. Form coalitions with experts with an appointed leader. Create new vision by reflecting on the causes of the disaster and have steps in place to move forward and improve. Communicate the new and accepted vision to everyone involved. Empower others to be on board with the new vision, knowing that change is necessary and that action needs to be taken quickly. Reward wins and short-term successes to continue motivation throughout the process. Consolidate improvements and maintain momentum with the vision and reinforce that change and make it stick, proving that people care about change and about progress and achievements.